Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an wa ala seyyidihim wa khatamihim habibi ilahi al-alameen abil qasim al-mustafa muhammad. Wa ala ahli beytih al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-ma'sumin. وأصحابه المنتجبين السلام على رسول الله أمين الله على وحيه وعزائم أمره الخاتم لما سبق والفاتح لما استقبل والمهيمن على ذلك كله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على صاحب السكينة السلام على المدفون في المدينة السلام على المنصور المؤيد السلام على أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين We are celebrating the occasion of the birth of one of the heroes that God introduced to mankind to save the people, to guide the people, not only during his lifetime, but even after his departure from this lower life, from this temporary abode. Millions of people flock to his shrine every year. Now that I speak to you, his city, his shrine is hosting millions, literally millions of people who believe in the intercession of this man, in his integrity, in his blessings, in his bounties and his gifts, God gifted him with these bounties. People, Muslims and non-Muslims, some of them are Christians, some of them Jews, some of them Arabs, some of them Persians, some of them Turks, some of them from other nationalities. They go to his shrine. They stand before his shrine to pay tribute to him. To ask him because he's the agent of God. We believe in the intercession. We believe that God has agents on this earth. He chose them. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuhan. He chose those agents from thousands of years ago. Selected them from among the purest of his creation. Noah was one of them. Abraham was one of them. Moses was one of them. Jesus was one of them. Prophet Muhammad was one of them. Imam Ali is one of them. Fatima to Zahra is one of them. Imam Hussein is one of them. And the eighth Imam, Al Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida, Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi, is one of them too. These are agents of goodness and healing. So even after his departure from this life, temporary life, he's there with God. He's alive. This is what our book says in chapter 2. Those who gave and sacrificed their life for the sake of God, God will keep them alive with him. And they can reach out to us. This man was only 55 years old. He spent 52 years of them in Medina where he was born, and the last years of his life, only three years, in Khurasan, in Qus, the ancient name of that place. But these three years were very important, and it changed the history of Islam. He was summoned against his will. He didn't want to leave his ha hometown, Medina, but the caliph of the time, the Ma'moon, the Abbasid Caliph coerced him to leave his birthplace and come all the way, travel hundreds of kilometers to be the crown prince of the Caliphate at that time. Why? Because Al Ma'mun wanted to appeal to the masses that we have no problem with the Prophet and his family. See, I'm appointing the most important man of the household of the Prophet as the crown prince to the regency. 
So he'll be the next caliph. We have no problem with them. But that was not true. Ma'amun, he didn't do this for the sake of God. He did this for the sake of himself to save his seat, the seat of Caliphate. Because he knew that the hearts and the minds of the people are drawn towards the Prophet and his family, Ahlul Bayt, the family of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he forced the Imam to go there. And the Imam found it an opportunity for him to show the people the real side of Islam. Islam was hidden. Islam was distorted. Islam was hijacked by people who have thirst for power, for dominance, for authority. So at that time, it was an opportunity for the Imam since Tus at that time, which is Mashhad today, was the capital of Islam, the seat of the Caliphate. And there were many people, many religions at that time. And the Ma'amun wanted to bring the Imam into dialogue and discussion and debate with the leaders of other faiths and other religions to embarrass the Imam, to defeat the Imam. So he would organize debates debates with the leadership of the Jewish community, with the leadership of the Christian community, with the leadership of the Zoroastrian community and other religions, even agnostics, even the atheist. And they will bombard the Imam with their questions, difficult questions. And the Imam being inspired by the source of knowledge and source of wisdom, which is God, he will answer these questions one after the other. To the dismay of the caliph. The caliph was furious. But the imam is connected to the source of wisdom. Source of knowledge. We believe all the prophets. That God sent and chose to the humanity. And their successors. The imams. They are divinely inspired. Their knowledge is a gift from God. Their wisdom. Their intelligence. Is a gift from God. And the Imam succeeded in drawing the attention, not just the attention, the fascination, the admiration of the leader of the Jewish community, of the leader of the Christian community, of the leaders of other communities. He became the star which led the Ma'moon to think of contemplating on putting an end to the life of this great man. And he poisoned him, and the Imam dies at the age of 55. Let me share with you one hadith, one narration of this Imam. On his way from Medina to Maru Khurasan, he stopped in many cities, and he took the longest route from Medina. It was not straight, so he, from Medina, uh, he went down to the south, he went into the Iraqi territories and then the Iranian territories into Khuzestan, Ahwaz, and then north to Naysabur, and then he ended in Maru Antus in Khurasan. Long journey. But the people of every city and every village, when they know that this hero is passing through their territories, they would come out because he's the son. Is the so someone who reminds them of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his beauty, in his character, in his manners. He would remind the thirsty people, and this is imagine this is about two hundred years, almost hundred and ninety years after Prophet Muhammad. People wanted to see his children, his offspring, his successors, so they would receive him with open arms until he reached the city of Naysabur. Today they call it Naysabur. The ancient name of it is Naysabur and that city produced many scholars. Their last name is Naysaburi on both the traditions, the Sunni tradition and the Shia tradition. So the Imam stood there to rest. While he was leaving the city of Naysabur, the scholars, men, women, young, old, they surrounded his caravan and they said, Yabna Rasulillah, O the son of Prophet Muhammad,
please, we want you to tell us, to gift us, like just what Ms. Dr. Misbah did, to gift us with the sayings of your grandfather, that you know definitely that this saying came from your grandfather, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Imam said, Sami'tu Abi, Al-Abd al-Salih Musa ibn Ja'far. I heard my father, the righteous servant, Musa, the son of Ja'far. His father, Imam al-Kadhim, you know him, he's buried in Baghdad. He was imprisoned for 11 years, 11 years, in an Iraqi jail by the caliph called Harun. Harun. He jailed his father 11 years until he died inside the jail. Sami'tu Abi al-Abd al-Salih, Musa ibn Ja'far, saying that I heard it from my father, Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq, saying that he heard it from his father, Muhammad al-Baqir, said that I heard this hadith from my father, Ali Zayn al-Abideen, from my father, Imam Hussein, from my father, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, from my grandfather, Ali says, I heard it from my teacher and mentor and cousin and a brother, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet said, I heard this hadith from Jibreel, Gabriel. What is the hadith? The hadith states, Kalimatu la ilaha illallah hisni faman dakhala hisni amina min adabi. This testimony. When you say there is no God in this universe, no boss, no leader, but God, and I surrender to God. This is, is my basin, is my bastion. And once you enter this bastion, this castle, this fortress, you're going to be protected against any damnation. Once you once you get hold of God and you testify that there is no Lord in this universe except God, you will get immunity and security. You will be safe. Then he walked a few steps. Again, he stopped. He said, بِشَرْطِهَا وَشُرُوطِهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا Not just that sentence. The sentence has also following. That following is that you, you have to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. And also you have to believe in the concept of Imamah. What is the concept of Imamah? The Prophet did not leave his community in disarray. Before he left, he appointed successors. And those successors are the descendants of Prophet Muhammad. Those successors are the 12 Imams, beginning with Imam Ali alayhi salam and ending with the last Imam. المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف My friends we are celebrating the birthday of this imam by having two honorable speakers one of them is you know him Dr. Misbah you know how much we love him and you know why we love him we don't do business together we don't have a corporation together. We did not open gas station together. So. There is no money between us. No, no monetary transaction, believe me. There is a spiritual transaction, spiritual connection. Because he changed the course of his life, 180 degrees. Many of you know about his story. He sacrificed everything. He sacrificed his mosque, his community. Many of his friends, they abandoned him. Because he found the truth and he decided to follow the truth at any expense. He didn't care. This is how we should do. When you find the truth, you cannot bring any excuses. You can't say, this is my father, my mother, my community, my office, my business, my money. Because God is more important than anything else in this universe. And the one who's taking care of you is not your boss or your company or your friends. It is God. I am proud of you, man. The second guest is a man 
who by accident discovered some Muslims next, next door Muslims. In fact, I went to that community, the Islamic Center near your church 15 years ago to cut the ribbon when they opened that pizza shop, you know, it was a pizza restaurant. So they turned that into an Islamic center. I think it 12, 15 years ago, Beaverton, Oregon. This man was inspired by Imam Hussein. You know, over centuries, you know what Imam Hussein did? It's amazing. Imam Hussein, when he died, he was completely crushed. No single bone in his body was safe. No single bone. Completely crushed. But look at what this crashed person, this person that was cut into pieces, into pieces. If you get an opportunity to look inside the grave, you don't see a safe body there. You see a body that, that has been cut into pieces. But look what Imam Hussein did to the hearts and the minds of millions of people. Muslims, non-Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus from all over the countries, all over the societies. They walk to pay tribute to Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein was not only for the Shias, neither only for the Muslims. Imam Hussein stood for God and to protect and save the humanity. To protect anyone who is oppressed, regardless of his or her faith, or color, or language, or culture. He gave his life for the happiness, for the salvation of mankind. Not just the Arabs, not just the Muslims, not just people of that time, all times. And look what God rewarded him. Rewarded him with the love. A love that is embedded in our hearts. They can take anything from us, anything. They can take our properties from us, our children from us, our money. In some countries like Bahrain, they take the citizenships away from people who were born there for many, they lived there for many, many, many centuries. They take the citizenship away from them just because they are Shias. But they cannot take the love of Ahlul Bayt and the love of Imam Hussein from our hearts. They can't do that. One of those who were inspired by Imam Hussein in this journey of Arba'in. And if you really want to know Imam Hussein well, you have to go on this Arba'in journey. We can go on other journeys too, other trips too, other seasons too. But this season is special. Something is special about this season. Something special about this highway, 80 kilometers between Najaf, where his father is buried, and Karbala, where the son is buried. Something special about that highway. You must walk to see for yourself and discover your, for yourself the inspiration, the beauty of this man and what he did to the hearts and minds of those people. Now, we're going to watch this movie that was made by the Reverend Pastor John Shook. John Shook. And after we watch this documentary, which is for 30 minutes, it is entitled, For the Love of Hussein, we would listen to him. And we thank him for flying today, leaving his family, his church, his community, to come and to discover a new community, new family. Those are your brothers and sisters here. We love you. God bless you for what you did. And you will see the reward of God and Imam Hussein in your life. You will see that. You will see the blessings flowing on you, your community, and your family. So if the movie is ready, let's watch it. And then immediately after that, Pastor John is going to address us, inshallah. And then we do the prayers, and then after that, the dinner, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.